What is going on there, boys and girls? Jim here, you know the channel name. Another unboxing video for y'all today. This is my brother's vehicle. It was purchased from Extreme RC. Extreme RC. And I believe this is pronounced Wina. This is the model 1582. 114 scale. Supposedly metal cab and metal tipper on the truck. But we'll find that out when we get her open. Looks like we have clear windows, a driver's seat. Hopefully a dashboard and some other nonsense in there. Once again, we'll see that when we get her open. Nothing on this half of the box. Nothing on the other half of the box. Nothing on top of the box. A little bit of damage right there. Spinning around to the back half. Got a picture of the transmitter, picture of the truck. Professional RC dump truck model with 10 functions. Zooming in on the transmitter. Not much to see here. Looks like our trim button's down yonder, sound switch, light switch, another peek at the truck, remote control, 2.4 gigahertz frequency, simulate real manipulation, <laughs> simulate real driving, realistic lights, realistic sound, fully controllable, forward, backwards, left, right, fully controllable hopper, up and down, high capacity battery included, realistic lights and sound, large scale of 1 14th. Cool looking background. It looks like they're building a bridge in the background there. Nice box art. Look at the bottom of the box. The last place with any kind of writing on the box. Caution. This product is not a toy. This is not intended for use by year 14 children. Kids under the age of 14. For your safety, please read the manual carefully and thoroughly before operating this product. Specifications and colors of contents may vary from photo. Includes user guide. Blah, blah, blah. Wina model number 1582, made in China. All the best toys are. And just like that, we're back to the front of the box again. Let's get a knife out, bust this baby open, and see what she looks like firsthand. Hey, go ahead there, E. Crack her on open. All right. Once again, my brother's dump truck. He owns the legendary Buckster loader. The Wina Wina 1593 excavator. And now this 1582 dump truck. First things first, take a look at our transmitter. Take a look at our transmitter. Not too shabby. Nice satiny feel to it. We have our steering trim buttons right down here. Lights, sound. All these trim settings are false. Nothing going on with those guys. Two false buttons up on the top of the transmitter. Left stick, forward reverse. Looks like a four channel, but it's got a gate in there so you can't move it from left to right. Right stick. We've got our steering left to right, but it also moves up and down. So I'm assuming that raises and lowers the box on the truck. And it appears to run on four AA batteries. Alright man, go ahead and grab whatever you want to grab out of there next. He's going for the battery. He's going for the battery. This is kind of what I was curious about. Whether this was a 4 volt or a 7.4 volt. 7.4. 7.4. Now, see, that's interesting. This was ordered from Extreme RC. Gary Cheevers, if you're watching this, brother, on Extreme RC, you guys need to change that in your website. It says on the description that it runs on a 4-volt battery. 4-volt battery on the description for this vehicle. And it runs on a 7.4-volt 2S, 2,000 milliamp. Uh, I don't know if it's a lithium polymer or a lithium ion. It doesn't state that on there. 218650, 7.4 volt, 2000 milliamp, XT30 connector on the end of it, if the camera would focus in on it. Right there, a little XT30. Alright, just to clear up my name on my legendary tipper unboxing video, my battery oversight, model number 1582, scroll down to battery, 4 volt, 2000 milliamp, 4 volts. Not my mistake, once again this is taken directly from Extreme RC's website. Since then I have talked to Gary Cheevers. He has updated their site, so it now states 7.4 volt, 2,000 milliamp lithium polymer. So everything is all fixed. No more mistakes on Extreme site. 
And here is the updated photo, 7.4 volt, 2000 milliamps. So Extreme RC has gone in and fixed the situation. No more oversight. And here is part of my email to Gary Cheevers at Extreme RC, letting them know about the 1582 spec snafu. And here is his reply, saying that they fixed the snafu. Everything is all good. It's kind of interesting there about the battery. If I would have known that, <laughs> Gary, you missed the sale, man. If I would have known that, I would have bought one of these too. Alright, nice looking truck. Yeah. Alright, what's metal, what's plastic? Metal cab. Clear windows. Metal box. Plastic gas tank. Plastic chassis. Plastic fender wells. Metal gate. Metal linkage. Metal rods. Rubber mirrors. Not adjustable or anything like that. Pretty heavy. You feel that right off the bat. Taking a look at the back of the truck. All metal. If we look on the inside of the tailgate here, excuse the angles. Nice and smooth. So no snag points for stuff to get hung up on as it's getting dumped out of the back of the truck. Good looking vehicle. Cross bracing on the tailgate back there. Gussets. Once again, metal links. Once again, metal links going to the tailgate. A couple orbs flying by. Plasticky rubbery tires, our fender wells, little plastic air tanks, plastic battery box, hydraulic tank, reservoir, our lift cylinder for the box. Taking a peek inside the cab. That is cool. The dashboard in there, steering wheel on the other side. Two bucket seats. Little glove box there on that side we can barely focus in on. Air filter up on top. Little sunroof. Blacked out. Looking through the windshield at the passenger seat. Driver's seat. Excuse the flash. As we look at the dash. <laughs> Blacked out windshield wipers, chrome wina emblem on the front. Trying to get a look in here on the driver's side. Sorry about the glare. If I turn off my flash, we just can't see anything at all. It does have a bucket seat there, the steering wheel. And a little bit of a dashboard going on in there. So that's pretty cool. Nice looking truck. Once again, metal cab, plastic lowers, plastic exhaust. Not too sure if that lift cylinder is plastic. It feels like the outer housing is plastic on that. And metal box. Well, looking at the underside of the truck, looks very similar to the legendary tipper. And of course I expect that since the legendary is pretty much a clone of one of these guys. So yeah, very similar. Tires are similar as well. A hard rubber plasticky consistency. Our accessories on the side, plastic once again, our fake air tanks, hydraulic tank, little battery box on top, no suspension. False steering adjustment down here, that would be like one of the old school trim adjustments. All the trim settings on this one are done on the transmitter. Here's a peek at the underside of the truck. All right, let's see how much this thing weighs real quick. It feels kind of weighty. We're trying to find a good spot to hang a, hang this thing by the scale. Figuring the tailgate's the best location for that. Go for it. And it looks like we're sitting right around eight and a half pounds, and a little over three point five kilos, maybe three point six, three point seven kilograms. So roughly 8.5 pounds or 3.6 kilograms. Pretty heavy for what it is. At least on that scale. Taking a look at our included battery charger. No surprise here. Same as all the other vehicles. 4.2 volt times 2. 800 milliamps times 2. 1600 milliamps. 1 1.6 amps. Included USB charger. Manual on the other hand. Don't really want to dive into that too deeply. 
I'll let you guys deal with that. If you want to read the manual, you can read your own manual. I just wanted to confirm the controls on the transmitter for that right stick. Left stick forward moves the vehicle forward. Left stick reverse moves the vehicle backwards. Right stick to the left turns left. Right stick to the right turns right. Kind of obvious. Pushing up on the right stick raises the box. Pulling down on the right stick lowers it. So I just wanted to confirm the controls for our tipper. Other than that, feel free to read the manual if you happen to buy one. Getting ready to install the batteries into the transmitter, we need to remove this Phillips head screw. Pardon my sleeve. Little tab here on the transmitter. We need to push this in and lift up. And that exposes our battery tray. Requires four AA batteries, install in the correct direction, negative to negative and positive to positive. Try not to show any particular brand names. You obviously can tell what I'm using. Cover installed. And we're not going to reinstall our screw. Not on the transmitter. I'm going to put the screw off to the side in the magnetic tool tray and throw that into another parts bag. Okay, we're going to install our battery. We need to remove our Phillips screw right here. I might need a little flat blade screwdriver to assist in this process a little bit here. Moving our battery cover, little XT30 connector on the inside here. Now I wasn't going to do any measurements on this truck as far as overall length and wheelbase and all that other good nonsense because it's pretty much identical to the legendary tipper truck that I just did the unboxing on. So if you want to see lengths and things of that nature you can check that video out. On the legendary tipper we can barely fit one of these batteries inside here. Pretty much the same outer dimensions on the tray, just not the same depth on the tray. We can get an 18650 pack inside the legendary tipper, just not enough room to get the tray uh, fully secured on it. It's just, just a little bit uh, tight in there. This one, plenty of room on the inside of here. Alright, getting ready to install our battery, little XT30 connector here. Nice little connector really. Wow, plenty of room on the inside of here. Probably can get two 18650s on top of each other. Might be able to get a 2S shorty pack in there. All kinds of room inside there. Might need to put some foam in here just to kind of keep this stuff from rattling around. Normally I would install our Phillips screw back in here, but just for the sake of video, I'm not going to reinstall it because I'm going to be unplugging this battery as soon as we finish. Whenever I get done using any of my vehicles, I always come back in and remove the batteries, disconnect them, take them out of the vehicle, and store them in a lipo safe storage bag. Here is our on off switch. We'll set this baby on the ground, get it all fired up, and see what she's all about. Turn our vehicle on. Turn our transmitter on. And our vehicle is running. Sound button over here, light button over here. Let's see how she sounds. throttle not very fast variable throttle though that's nice steering variable steering that's nice as well so variable controls on the steering and on the throttle Let's check out our lights and sound again here for going forward and reverse. Lights going forward. Flashing in reverse. 
Right turn signal, right headlight flashing, left turn signal, left headlight flashing. Flashing in reverse. Illuminated forward. Right turn, left turn. Shut off our sound. Lights, shut those off. Do we still get backups? Oh, the lights are off and the lights are off, so that's cool. Heavy. Checking out our tipper. Should be up to go up and down to go down. Full extension. Not too bad. A little sloppy right there on full extension with our cylinder. <laughs> Looks a little bit blown out there. I'd imagine if that was real life, it would be just gushing hydraulic oil everywhere. How this works exactly, the bed is being raised and lowered via these two links right here. And down on the inside, there's a geared motor, I assume, with a big steel wheel on there or mounted to it, or a disc mounted to it. I explained this in a previous video as well. Similar to this, like a piston on a crankshaft. Your links are hooked up to the end of the wheel like that. When the wheel rotates, the links drop down. As it continues to rotate, it lifts back up. So it's like a piston on a crankshaft. And that's exactly how that's working. So if you keep holding it in the same direction, it's going to continuously go up and down. So, let's see how it sounds in motion with the tipper. Very similar to the legendary, or I should say the legendary is very similar to this. Tailgate is all mechanically operated. A little linkage here going to the gate that comes down to our outer fenders. Linkage doesn't move. Gate doesn't necessarily move. When you start to raise the box up, the box tilts up and that just kind of automatically hinges things. Box is moving and that causes our gate to raise. I love the tailgate back here, all metal. I love the gusseting that they have, the supports going around the edges there. They probably stick up about a sixteenth of an inch. It looks very solid and smooth on the inside as well, so no snags when you're dumping stuff back out. Very nice truck all in all. I love the metal cab, the metal box on the back. love that tailgate once again. love the fact that we can see inside the cab, dual bucket seats on the inside, full dashboard, steering wheel whole nine yards. Awesome vehicle all in all. The only thing that would be better if the doors actually opened up on it. That would be <laughs> pretty cool. Otherwise, awesome vehicle. Let's get the legendary tipper, put it up next to it. Pretty sure once again that the legendary tipper is, you know, kind of a direct ripoff of this guy. Not to be showing off the legendary tipper, this video is all about this vehicle. But they're pretty much the exact same size, same tires all the way around, same wheels and all that other nonsense. Checking some differences here. Very loud sound on the legendary trucks. I want to see if the steering is proportional. Not proportional. Throttle. Not proportional. Subtle differences between our two trucks right here. Fake steering adjuster on the 1582 sitting on the front half of the truck. Legendary kind of underneath the axle. Same pattern, just reverse order on those two. Battery tray. Huge compartment on the 1582. Gigantic on this vehicle. Once again, you can probably get two 18 650s on top of each other in here. Possibly a 2S shorty pack. Gigantic battery tray. Battery tray on the legendary tipper. 
not so much. You can fit an 18650 in here, but you can't get the lid on there just because the battery sticks up a little bit too far to get the lid on there. So that won't work unless you come in here and modify the battery tray. As far as the rest of the vehicle goes down the line, pretty much identical. 1582 once again on the left. Same tires and wheels for the most part. Same compound, same consistency. Chassis basically looks the same the rest of the way down the line. But I believe the 1582 might be a little bit stronger in comparison to the Legendary. I know the specs for this truck are pretty impressive. I'm not going to throw any numbers out there, but its weight ratings are pretty high. Uh, they really don't throw you any weight ratings for this one. I think they, they do, but they're marginal by comparison, like right around 7 kilograms maybe at the most for this guy. And the numbers for this one are, you know, up into the double digits. So big numbers on this guy, not very impressive numbers on this guy. All right, I pulled this info directly from Extreme RC's website for the 1582. Look at there at the bottom. It can carry 50 to 75 kilograms. That is a staggering amount. 50 to 75 kilograms for the 1582. And look at that. I just found another mistake on Extreme's website. Look at the controller batteries. It says it requires three AA batteries, and we know that it requires four AA batteries. Another mistake. Looking at them head to head. Nose to nose, pretty much the same. Legendary not looking too bad. Relatively basic, blacked out windows on the cab. Eh, you know, pros and cons, you don't have to put a driver in there. Uh, that's a pro. <laughs> a con, you can't see inside the cab. Wine of 1582. Nice, you can see right inside the cab with our clear window on the front. Chrome Wina logo on the front there, Owina, Wina. Our headlights, otherwise basically the same. One other thing to point out, our insert right here on the front, that is plastic rest of the cab is metal but once again full interior dual bucket seats dashboard steering wheel defroster vents <laughs> uh, they did a pretty nice job on the inside of this one so subtle differences right there between the two metal versus plastic once again inside of the box dump box itself this one is kind of shaped like a rock box u-shaped on the inside 1582 Somewhat U-shaped, but we got a big flat bottom here on the inside. Ultimately, we can probably hold more material with this truck with the 1582. I know it can haul more material. They don't give you any weight specs in the manual, but from what I read on uh, Extreme's website, it's a uh, it can hold a staggering amount of weight. Legendary tipper box, kind of U-shaped on the inside here, like a rock box, all plastic. And the fact that it's shaped like that, and the fact that it's all plastic, means that the material will probably slide out of this truck a little bit easier than it will out of this one. Tailgate, on the other hand, we have those little plastic gussets on the inside, which are all snag points for material to get hung up on on the way out the door. 1582, on the other hand, all smooth. 1582, man, nice looking truck. No complaints on that whatsoever. No complaints on the little legendary tipper over there either, but 1582 is a very nice looking truck. One thing that I'm not liking, though, with this truck... is our uh, limp noodle right here. This needs to come up a little bit higher in order to get this to be somewhat tighter. Sorry for talking about this on camera right now, but just to solve this little problem right here, the little bracket holding the top half of our cylinder is bolted to the header on the truck. I think if we remove this bracket and shaved some plastic off of one of these mounts, uh, just to thin that out a little bit, that'll bring this up a little bit and it should tighten up our limp noodle cylinder there because that is kind of disappointing this one gets to a point in this rotation where it's tight on the cylinder there and it doesn't give you that limp noodle effect right there floppy and it gets to a certain point on its revolution where it actually tightens up Right there, at like the apex of its revolution, it gets somewhat tight. Yeah, it's at its highest point. That's as tight as we can get it. Basically, how to fix that problem would be to come in here, remove this bracket. It's bolted on in two pieces. Put it on a, put it on a grinder or a sander. Thin it out a little bit. And then reattach it, which will raise the cylinder up a little bit further. 
and then hopefully be able to take out that slot that's in there. It doesn't need to go up too far. Uh, a millimeter or two just to get that to tighten up a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be floppy. Apologize for the poor lighting conditions, but there we go. Final looks. A lot of construction equipment sitting here. RC construction equipment. And a final look at my brother's new Wina 1582 tipper truck or dump truck. Very nice truck, once again. As far as size comparisons and measurements and things of that nature, pretty much identical to the legendary truck. If you're interested in measurements, check out my legendary video. Full measurements on that one, so pretty much identical. As far as what can reach in the back and what can't, same thing. Check out that legendary tipper unboxing video, and you can see what can reach in the back of it and what can't. And there we go, group photo. Once again, getting tougher and tougher to get all these vehicles in on camera at the same time. I have to keep moving that camera further and further back in order to squeeze them all in there on the camera. Uh, all the vehicles on the left belong to my brother. Vehicles on the right belong to myself. Legendary Buckster, Wina 1593, Wina 1582, all my brother's vehicles. Legendary Tipper, modified Wina 1550, Wina 1580, all belong to myself. And they are all part of the RC After Dark Off-Road Adventure Park Track Maintenance Division. And I can't wait to get all these vehicles out on the Adventure Park to actually do some track maintenance with them. I've got a long list of chores for them to do, a long list of activities, a lot of erosion control and other projects and things of that nature. So just waiting on Mother Nature to figure out whether it's uh, winter or spring <laughs> so we can get these guys out and actually put them to work. So that is going to do it, everyone. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome, and we will see you all on the next one. Thanks again.